Good evening. Let's open tonight's service with hymn number seven in the Gospel Hymns digital or um, spiral hymn book. And let's all stand together. Number seven. four services tonight and they're still weak but they're doing fine you said they're doing okay and uh, I've been texting with Greg the last few days Greg and Tricia went up uh, Tuesday afternoon with Jennifer to the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville um, and he wanted us to pray for Jennifer tonight and for wisdom for them and the doctors uh, she had her CT scan on Tuesday afternoon she had a biopsy this morning and tomorrow, she'll, they'll consult with the doctors to see what the next step is, which may be chemotherapy. Uh, anyway, I'm sure Greg will update us when they get back. But uh, Greg and Trish and Jennifer, they'll all be home tomorrow, tomorrow evening, tomorrow afternoon. All right, I want to do scripture reading tonight from um, uh, John chapter 6. John 6, starting at uh, verse 53. This, this kind of reminds me of um, where Greg is preaching through the book of Ruth right now. Uh, and Naomi, you know, told, asked her daughters-in-law to go, go back. And um, this was where, this is the scripture where many of our Lord's disciples went back. And he turned to his picked disciples and uh, asked them, will you lead me too? And it's uh, a great know, uh, the Lord gave uh, Peter uh, divine inspiration in his answer. So I'll begin at verse 53, John 6, 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, that's food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As a living father hath sent me and I, love, and I live by the father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in, his, knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What, and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. For 
From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure. I have a note there that says it also means, and we believe and know that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you this evening. Lord, approaching your throne of grace. Lord, you've told us to come. You've invited us to come. Lord, send us not away the way those disciples, those unbelieving disciples left you. Lord, we need your spirit to cause us to be like Peter, to know that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Where else can we go, Lord? Lord, don't send us away. And Lord, keep our hope in you. Lord, we ask that you would be gracious to our sister Jennifer, to her parents, Greg and Tricia. Lord, be with Deanna and RG. They need strength. Lord, be with us this hour. Send your spirit now, Lord. Uh, touch Jeff. Give him a message that will touch our hearts to cause us to see Christ, to, to only think of things above this hour. Lord, we ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, Let's stand once again, and we'll do our second hymn, number um, 58, 58, from the, the hardback to me. Jesus, the very thought of Sweetness fills my breast, but sweeter far thy face to see, and in thy presence rest. Nor voice can sing, nor heart can frame, nor can the sweeter sound than thy blessed name. O Savior of mankind, O hope of every contrite heart, O joy of all the meek, to those who given me a message tonight. Uh, could we turn to Ezekiel chapter 20, please? One of the terrible things about this poison 
called sin, one of the terrible things about it is that sin is stronger than the sinner. Sin is stronger than the sinner. And that's right, because especially those listening right now who have no hope and who do not believe on the Son of God, you know of, a, of those things that you've done that you said you will never do again. You feel the consequences of it. You are sincerely wanting to never do that again. And a few days later, a few hours later, there you are. It's not about your sincerity. It's a sin thing. You're a sinner. And sin is stronger than the sinner. That means that when we're confronting or dealing with sin in others, it doesn't work the way that you might think it would. If you've been a parent, if you've been a, a boss, you know that it doesn't work to go to somebody and say, you're blowing it. You need to shape up. I'm withdrawing my blessings from you until you can get your act together. That doesn't work. That just brings animosity and separation and more sin. It stirs up sin. The scripture says that when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But uh, the scripture says a reproof enters more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. If a man is wise and he's been getting off course, you can go and tell him. You can tell him, and he will respond. If a man's a fool, you could whip it into him. You could beat him. He still won't understand. He's a fool. You cannot get wet off of water, and you can't pound the foolishness out of a fool, the scripture says. But God makes us wise unto salvation. He breaks our heart over our sin, and he shows us that Christ is all. Christ is has been our all and everything that he had to go through to retrieve us. When thou with rebukes dost correct a man for iniquity, thou makest all his goodness to pass away. And when a man's goodness passes away, he wants the goodness of another. We have sinned and we are sin. And God shows us that Christ is all and in all. And we're in Ezekiel chapter 20, and let's start reading at verse 39. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, go ye, serve every one his idols, and hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in my holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. And I will accept you with your sweet savor when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I shall bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for the which I lifted up my hand to give it to your fathers. And there shall ye remember your ways and all your doings wherein ye have been defiled. And ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that ye have committed. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have wrought with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings. O ye house of Israel, saith the Lord God. Here we see scattered. Peter called them scattered strangers. God's elect are scattered throughout the countries. And he calls them. He brings them into his church. He shows Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. God doesn't show these things outside of the kingdom. He brings us into his kingdom, and he shows us, and he shows us that Christ 
is everything. He shows us that long before we ever began hating him, he had put our sin on his son. And that causes me to hate my sin and to want to turn from it. To beat somebody with the law doesn't do anything. It won't help anybody. And God knows that with his lost children, the only thing that will bring them to hate their sin and bring them to his feet is to show them his love and his mercy and that he has been their salvation. So by bringing these glad tidings of peace that makes enemies friends, he gathers his lost sheep and makes them know that, as it says in our verse, I am the Lord. To know that he is the Lord, uh, so much of that means knowing that he has been being your Lord. David, David told us, he spoke of God the Father. He said, Lord, you took me from the sheep coat. You took me from following the sheep. I was a nobody. I was a nobody, Lord. And who am I, Lord? And what is my house that you have brought me hither to? Lord, why me? Why me, Lord? I, I thought this last week I'm getting close to my 20th high school reunion, if there is going to be one. I thought, well, wait, who would be there? Sometimes I feel like there aren't many uh, left. Uh, accidents, uh, drugs, accidental gunshots, hunting accidents, suicide. Why? Why am I still here? And David ended that by saying, uh, it was a small thing. This was a small thing in thy sight, O oh God, to bring me here. Uh, once gathered, though, what are these saints doing? I hope what we're doing tonight, right here. Here they are. We're brought out from among the people in the countries where we've been scattered. Here we are in God's holy mountain, accepted as a sweet savor and taught to loathe ourselves. In Malachi says that then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another and the Lord hearkened and heard and a book of remembrance was written before them for them before the Lord and I will spare them and they shall be mine in the day that I make up my jewels saith the Lord he brings us to his house he brings us to his holy hill, and we love to speak of the wonderful works of God. I found a, let's go, there's only two places we're turning. Let's go to Mark, Mark's gospel, the first chapter. I wanna see what they're doing here, and I wanna see what we're doing tonight. And we can find ourselves right in these verses here. Uh, let's go to Mark chapter one, in verse 29. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of, the, of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at even, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Is that not what's going on here tonight? We drove here. We drove, we think about this. You go to work in the morning, you're in a dark, dark world of unbelief and sin. Drive home, maybe have some spiritual conversation with your wife, you listen to a sermon. Uh, what's going on there? It's dark everywhere, except in your house. 
for the light of the world is in your house and people are healed there. That's what's going on here. This is what God brings his scattered sheep to do, to gather together and to speak of the Lord and to think on his name. And that breaks our heart. It's not the law. It's not being told to be good. It's being told we're not, and Christ is all. So... Let's go to uh, let's go to Psalm 40. So here we are. We're brought out from the nations, and God is sanctified in us before the heathen. We're taught to fear God and plead Christ alone. So let's look in our book of remembrance here, and we'll see how low our Lord had to reach down to save our souls. Psalm 40, this is everything we love speaking about. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. You know that this is Christ. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. You recall in, uh, in Mark's gospel in chapter 14, it says when, that, when they were done in the upper room, it says when they were going out, they sung a hymn. Now, you remember earlier in the chapter, he had said, prepare the Passover. This is what they were doing. Make ready the feast. Can you think of another time in scripture they sang a song right after the Passover. It was Moses and Miriam on the other side of the sea after God had drowned their enemies. Now here is Christ, our Passover, sacrifice for us. He's taking us back to the song of Moses, how he had just, he was about to deliver his people from the Egyptian bondage. He's breaking our hearts over our sin. Do you remember how scared the Israelites were before they crossed over the sea? Do you remember how scared they were? They couldn't go anywhere. And you remember the first verse in Exodus chapter 15, the first verse of that song, it says, Sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Everything that we could never outrun, everything that was going to destroy us, a horse and chariot, you, can't, you cannot escape that. They were on foot. We can't escape our sin. And he has rescued us from what we could not rescue ourselves from. Now, isn't that funny? Many shall see this song. It's a song that you see. Because we see Jesus. Verse 4, blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Usward. Christ identifies himself and his church as one, just as the father delights to see his son marry a bride. How can he not bless both? Remember, Christ prayed, and the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them, that they may be one as we are one. Uh, he is one with us. Psalm 28 eight says, the Lord is the his elect strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Our, we have the same father as Jesus Christ. That is, do we love to talk about that? Does that not cause us to turn from sin? The goodness of God, that is the only thing that will do it. 
Now, he's going to need that saving strength uh, because we're going to see in the next verse, the blood of bulls and goats does not take away sin. He's going to have to leave all to come here where he'll have nowhere to lay his head. Does that break your heart? He did that for you? Sac- sacrifice, verse 6, sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Uh, my ears hast thou opened. I, I admit my, the first thing I think when I read that is I go back to Exodus chapter 21 about the servant. That's not what it is. It's saying the word here is his ears have been formed. The word open is to be formed, fitted for a purpose. God fitted him for his mission to earth. He was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. Uh, We can turn to Hebrews chapter 10, and it fills out the explanation. It says, a body hast thou prepared me. He took on himself the nature of those who broke the law to restore the law. Now, now he was here. He was conceived in the womb of the virgin. Do you remember it says he grew in favor in the sight of God and men? My ears hast thou opened. God continually was fitting and equipping Christ for his duty and his mission. Uh, a few weeks ago, Greg mentioned a verse in Isaiah chapter 50. God the Father, he he wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth Christ's ears to hear as the learned. Uh, a God who comes to right where I am and does everything to rescue me is the only thing that melts my heart. Let's go down to seven. For my loins are filled with a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and sore broken. I have roared by reason of the disquietness of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before thee, and my groaning is not hid from thee. My heart panteth, my strength faileth me. As for the light of mine eyes, it also is gone from me. My lovers and my friends stand aloof from my sore, and my kinsmen stand afar off. They also that, I'm sorry, I was reading from the wrong song. Let's go to verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips. O Lord, thou knowest. I call you not servants. I call you friends. He tells us everything. He tells us everything. I call you friends. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. Mine iniquities have taken hold upon me, so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head, therefore my heart faileth me. You remember in verse 5. God's wonderful thoughts and his works that he has done. They can't be reckoned up in order. They're more than can be numbered. And all that for sinners in verse 12, whose sins cannot be numbered more than the hairs of his head. And when the Lord gathers his wandering sheep and brings them to his hill and breaks their heart 
over sin. That's what he shows them. Innumerable blessings for those with innumerable sins, nothing but sins. He says in verse 12, I'm not able to look up. Up is where he came from, though. In Proverbs 8, he says, Before you gave the sea its decree that it should not pass, before you laid the foundations, then I was there as one by him, as one brought up with him, rejoicing always before him. And I was daily his delight. Jesus Christ, the beloved of the Father, perfectly happy in heaven, rejoicing. And he came here for sinners. Um, our Lord will have every single sinner he died for and he will bring them to his feet and he will make their goodness to pass away and though he will bring them into his church to talk of his wonderful works and that is our only hope amen Savior say, thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness watch and pray, find in me thine all in all, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe, sin had left a crimson stain, he Washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find thy power and thine alone can change the leper spots and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. For nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim, I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's land. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow.